Hello everyone. In this video, I will be covering one of the Azure Databricks interview question recently asked in a Infosix and a Insight Out interview. Both of these companies has asked this question. So let's see what is the question. So the question is we need to pass parameters from Azure Data Factory to Databricks notebooks. So in case if I have Databricks notebook available uh, to the Databricks notebook, we need to pass parameter from Azure Data Factory. So very important interview question. So let's see how we can pass parameters from Azure Data Factory to our Databricks Notebook. We are on the Databricks Notebook right now. Uh, very first thing, if you want to receive parameters from Azure Data Factory, we need to have widgets created. So through widgets, we can get a parameters from Azure Data Factory. So let's see how we can create a widgets. So by using a command dbutils, we can create a widgets. So we have our different types of widgets available. So we have our text, we have drop down, uh, multi-select, combo box. So there are a lot many uh, types of widgets available. So according to our requirement, we can select any of the widgets and we can get it. In this scenario, maybe I will be taking a widget as a text. So text type I'm taking. So let us assume, um, I want to get a parameter value from data fact notebook as a maybe region, region details or city details. In retail domain, maybe we'll be run the models based on a region or markets. Uh, so I'm assuming here city or a region as a text, what I want to get from our data factory. So one thing we can give uh, here, uh, we need to give here a text name and also we can give default value if you want any default value. Maybe I will not give any default value. So I'll leave default value as it is. So once you create a widgets, now if you run, execute this one, you can see here, widget is created, okay? So that is how we can create a widgets. And if you want to get the value, if you want to collect the value, we need to use a dbutils widget start get. So same similar kind of query, but we need to use a get option here. So on what we need to get, so we have created a city. So we need to get a city there. Okay, so in this way, we need to create a widget and we need to get that widget, we need to clear that widget. Maybe I will give this uh, a variable name as a city. So our value will come and store in a variable city. Now, if you want to print that, you can print it and see the city value. Okay, now if I start executing this from null, so all the commands will run and see we are not getting anything here because we have not provided any value. So let us say if I provide any values, let us say if I provide a something called Hyderabad. Now if I execute this one, all three commands will run. Now see all three commands has executed and we can see it is printing a city as a Hyderabad. So here we are providing a value, but in our scenario, we need to get this value from other data factory. Now, why we, we want to get it from a Azure Data Factory? So what is the purpose we need to get? So let me talk about a use case. Let us say anyone is working on a retail domain. So they will be working on a checking the product, product wise sales based on a region. So region wise, if you want to check the sales, if someone is running a, uh, how to check the sales for Hyderabad region, so they will pass the value Hyderabad. So for that particular reason, how much, how much sales has happened, we can see. Similarly, if someone want to check for a Bangalore location, how much sales is happening, so they can pass the Bangalore value. So that is a one of the use case. There will be other use cases as well. Maybe if you want to get a table name from a data factory, or if you want to get a file name from data factory. So that is also some of the use cases. So let me create a sample data frame um, to have a details like a product and sales. So we can filter the value based on the parameter value you're passing here. So assuming I'm having an information, I'm getting a data frame here with the sample data. Now let's see, I'm taking a information in this way. So we have a list. So we are having a, a list of values here. And these are the headers I'm taking and we are creating a data frame out of it. So once data frame is created, I'm using a data frame name as a DF3 and I'm going to display it. 
okay now see i'm having information in such way we have product id product names and the sales happen that for that product and the region for which region the sales has generated now if i do a filter on a bangalore location i get uh, only these two records so we can easily identify how much sales happened for bangalore region the similarly if i uh, for if i give a region as a mysore so i can get the mysore region uh, sales details now we want to filter these details so if you want to filter these details we can write a filter condition and uh, if you want to pass the value parameters value we can also pass it so let's start writing a filter value here So I'll be filtering based on a region. So I'll give here as a region. Region is equal to is equal to maybe if I give Mysore. So Mysore only will be filtered in the output. Okay, if I execute this one, you see Mysore details are only filled up. So in this way, I can parameterize this value. So instead of giving a Mysore or Bangalore, so let's parameter as a city. So this is the parameter we have created. So whatever value I pass here, that value will come here and we'll get the output according to that value. So for a value Hyderabad, we don't see any region information here. So in that case, we don't get anything output. Maybe if I click on run all, now see, we are not getting any output because we are filtering based on a region city. Maybe if I give here, I so. Now if I execute this one, all the notebooks. So parameter is in parameter is passing the Mysore value uh, here. So because of that, we are filtering only Mysore information. In this way, we can give a value here, or we can pass the value from other data factory also. So now we have seen how to give value from here and how we are getting that information uh, dynamically here. In the same way, how we can do from other data factory, we'll also see that. So let's go to other data factory. So I'm on other data factory right now. So we'll create a pipeline. Uh, let it be a pipeline one as a name. So we'll be using here notebook activity. So through notebook activity, we can call out notebook and we can pass the parameter value. So in the notebook activity, uh, we require a link service, link service for Databricks. So let's click on new link service. So we can create a link service for Databricks. We need to provide a few details like uh, subscription details and all. So I'm on a Freetail account. So I'll be using a Freetail uh, subscription details. And we need to give a workspace name. So my, my workspace name is ADB workspace 2005. So that is what I'm using here. And uh, next thing is a cluster. So if you want to create a new job cluster or existing interactive cluster, um, uh, maybe I will go with the existing interactive cluster. So I'm already having a cluster. I'm on an artist cluster. So we'll be using interactive cluster and uh, it is asking for authentication methods. So there are, uh, there are different types of authentication methods available. So I will go with the access token. So this access token details will get from Databricks only. Uh, so if you want to get the access token details, Maybe we can go to user, user settings. From user settings, we can see a developer here. In developer, we can see access tokens here, okay? So if we click on manage, we can generate a new token and we can use that token for creating a connection. So let's generate a token. And what is this token for? I'm using this token for Azure Data Factory. I can give a lifetime, uh, let it be a 90 days, generate it. Okay, so make sure to copy the token. So once you close it, uh, we can not able to see it again. So let's copy it. Yes, it is copied. Click on done. Okay, now the token is generated. I even uh, copy the token. Now we can go back to Azure Data Factory. Give the token details here. So whenever we give token details automatically, so it will get uh, cluster details here. So whatever cluster we are using, uh, that cluster details will come here. So I'm using a test cluster, test cluster details has came here. We can test the connection if it is uh, a connection is successful or not. If the connection is not successful, which, which means you are not giving a details properly here. So I've given all the details correctly. So connection is successful. Let's create it. 
So in this way, we can create a linked service for uh, Azure Databricks. So once linked service is created, now we can able to access all the notebooks which is available in that particular workspace, Azure Databricks workspace. So that thing we can select in the settings tab. Okay, so we need to select here notebook. Now if you click on browse, I can able to browse all the notebooks which is available in my workspace. So in, in my workspace, right now there is only one notebook available, test notebook. So that is what I'm using here. Now if I go back to notebook. Okay, so this is the notebook I'm using right now. The notebook name is test notebook. So it is the same notebook here also. Click on OK. So once you selected a notebook, uh, we have something called base parameters. So this is the place we can create a parameters and we can pass parameters from Azure Data Factory to our database notebook. Okay, so whatever value will pass from Azure Data Factory, it will come all over here. And from here, uh, it will collect the value in the widgets get, it will collect the value. It will be assigned to a city variable. So wherever you are giving this variable, so in all, those, in all those places, you will get a value, okay? So let's see how we can do that. So we need to create a new parameter. Maybe I'll give the same name, city, city as a parameter name. And if you want to give value, you can give value here. Or it is recommended to give value by creating a pipeline parameter so that whenever you run this pipeline, so at the time of uh, debugging or the time of uh, running the notebook, so it will ask for user input. There we can provide. So to create a pipeline parameter, we can click, we can click anywhere on the open canvas. Now you can see these are the pipeline parameters variables on all. From here, we can create a pipeline parameters. So maybe I'll give a pipeline parameter name as a pipeline parameter for region details. Something I'm giving in this way, that is a pipeline parameter. Now we can go back to our notebook and whatever pipeline parameter we have created, we can call it here. That's it. So in this way, we can create a parameter and call it. Now if we click on debug to run this notebook, so whenever I click on debug, notebook will start executing and whatever value I pass, so that value will go here, okay? So let's click on debug. Now see it is asking for a user input. Uh, maybe I will give value as a Bangalore. So I want to get information only related to Bangalore region sales. So I will give information as a Bangalore here, okay? So click on okay. So it will start debugging. It will run the pipeline and the value will be passing from Azure Data Factory to our database notebook. Whatever value I pass Bangalore, uh, that will go to widgets. Now, if you want to see, we can open this in details. We can open a run page URL and we can see on the notebook what it is running, what is the output, we are getting everything from here. Okay, so I pass the value Bangalore. So that is the reason it is printing a Bangalore here. It is getting a value Bangalore. And if you go to filter here, so it is filtering only Bangalore region details. So in this way, we can pass parameters from data factory to Azure Databricks notebook. That is pretty much we're having for this video. I hope you like the video. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel.